ang kwetsyo. Ang jurong jumra, pagka man to, kong jumra ka na tip thi sa mga ka. Nga prak ni, ang jumra, thua sa mga ka man to sa dap ta khay kam sa say Richard Dutman ta mri yek propon sa tuh pi sa harot am rik mok. Kalam chi sa mga ka, kanya chi thi huang lang rik ka am pi sa thana phi bwata miin, a bwata miin bok kul. Phi ki nang bok kul de ang jumra, ko hang chi nha cho rum de kong kong jumra ka sa mga ka prak ni. ส่งกรุบลูกประเทศสำหรับสาวนาแก่ในทั้งไงนี้กลางชีกัดสมควรคืนแทนกรุบพิกีแต่งอ้อในเรื่องกระไดนี้มีวัตถุมีนโดยไ
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Good evening, uh, Mr. Dutton. Um, I am about to, um, good evening. I'm about to finish my um, examination and as indicated to you yesterday, I would like uh, to finish um, with uh, listening with you to an audio tape, an audio tape of um, an interview or speech uh, that Paul Pot uh, has, has given to you and Elizabeth Becker in uh, December 1978. Now, Mr. Dutton, I believe you received yesterday um, through your council a transcript of the about nine and a half minutes of the interview. Uh, is that indeed correct and if yes um, have you been able to read it I have read it and I listened to an audio version of, it, of most of it before this session began. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dutman. Um, Mr. President, uh, for the benefit of um, Nguyen-Chia and also for the benefit of um, the public, I would like like to ask your permission to have this nine and a half minute audio tape um, played in the courtroom. I believe the AV unit is ready um, if you grant the request to play the audio. Um, maybe one warning to accompany my request. Um, the quality is not always uh, that good, it seems that when Pol Pot is speaking in Khmer, um, his words are quite, quite soft, and when uh, Kyun Prasit is translating, the words are loud. So I hope uh, it goes well. Um, um, so again, my, my request to have your permission. we can say in a peace in a situation of peace the building up of our country and uh, could be more rapidly and also we could have uh, more possibility to build up a people situation in democratic country here, as you are aware of, and the world opinion also is aware of, is that democratic country here is under the aggression of the Vietnamese. <laughs> The whole world opinion uh, pay great attention about um, the Vietnamese aggression against democratic Campuchia. Stop the nonsense. There are answers. Ba ba. Tham chi lu vi vi tu vi vi tu copy. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm, I'm also directing um, Some my local remarks local to the AV unit. It is the excerpt that starts at minute 33.15. I believe um, they were accordingly instructed, um, and I heard something completely different, so I'm not quite sure where they are. It is a document D28R starting at minute 
นาบกลบให้ตัวตัวริบจอมทายจะทำไมมันมีการพอนจะล่ำนะให้บิดโอกรอยนี้คือตรงในตีสามสบายจะดับรำเ
ยินเทรับคิดคอยเวทีนยินอันตรายสุดยิ่งสงบยิ่งตุ่มตุ่มยินบารมีเด็ดดอกกำลังนี้เออตัวจริงตัวเต็มตัวมาไว้ลูกทางกัมพูชีนะเด็กนี้ตัวประชาชนทางตระกูลสุวิชานิสมุนยาที่เวียกำปุ้งจนบุญสังครีมยินยินกำปุ้งเชียร์ต่อไปเยอะได้ทัดคำหักหนวดในสัตว์ก็ที่บุบดีกำสังครีมปรุงเลือดปักสมบัติมาสวีมาระวายกันทุกทีเด็กนู่นเรื่องนี้ไม่ได้เรื่องจุ่มลูกต้นแบนไอ้ทอมนะ So this problem is not an ordinary problem of border ทีการวัดยุทธศาสตร์หรือวัดยุนสำหรับสัตว์ต้นเช่นบอกว่ามันคือศาสตร์บาสโซเวียสในอาเซียที่นึกอาเซียบอกว่าลูกสักลูกบอกว่า This is the carrying out of the Vietnamese strategy of Indochina Federation and 
the strategy of the Soviet in Southeast Asia and in the world. Let's call the preach about. Now the world is clearly aware of. Nang tak sempat basuhi ko min tenang pecah ni. An amount of what I was back remember there are also forces who oppose the putih milik Moscow tu ko pecah ni. And the various countries in the world have opposed also. Um, Mr. Dutman, have you been able to, be to be listen to this audio tape? Um, of, of course, I realize it's a long time ago um, that this interview took place. Um, but does this, does the listening to this interview um, jog your memory? No. Um, do you remember uh, any reaction at your side um, in relation to this interview that you had after the interview or is that simply too long ago? I don't recall any reaction. Well, I think that is there any reaction now at this stage that you can uh, give uh, to the trial chamber, chamber about this interview or, or am I asking too much now? Uh, 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 oh, I don't get your question. Is, is there anything uh, that you would like to say now in reaction to uh, having heard again this interview? No, I have no comment. Um, Mr. President, since I have run out of time, um, I would like to see the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dutton. Have a good evening. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dutton, please come to the podium. Please come to the podium. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening to you, Mr. Dudman. Um, my name is my name is Dale Lysak. I'm one of the international uh, prosecutors, uh, and I will be uh, asking you uh, some questions today. Uh, Good evening. <coughs> Yesterday, um, Noon Chea's counsel uh, asked you uh, about your capture and detention in Vietnam or in Cambodia by Vietnam troops in 1970. And I have just a few follow-ups on that subject. Uh, I want to read uh, or uh, reference you to a short excerpt from your book, 40 Days with the Enemy, uh, which is on our case file as E338.17. Uh, at S0002318. Uh, only available in English. Uh, and you wrote here that you were generally treated well with the exception of the first day when you were treated roughly for a time by Cambodians uh, which treatment was halted by uh, authorities of the I Liberation Army uh, who guaranteed your safety uh, if it was verified you were international no. journalists. Now I want to follow up on, on this. When you said that you were treated roughly by Cambodians, uh, who were those people and what did they do to you? I don't recall. When you said that uh, you made a reference to the Liberation Army as having intervened and protected you, do you remember 
who you were referring to by the Liberation Army? Uh, who was it that came in? And 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 uh, I don't remember. Let me move to another subject. Uh, Mr. Um, I want to ask you a, a few questions about uh, another issue that came up yesterday. Uh, which is the obstacles uh, or limitations uh, you faced as a journalist trying to obtain information uh, when you were in uh, Democratic Camp Chia in December 1978. Uh, yesterday, uh, Mr. Kope, Nguyen Chai's counsel, uh, read to you an excerpt from uh, one of your articles, B3 3290, in which you stated, quote, the visit, the visit amounted to a conducted tour with strict limits on conversations with ordinary Cambodians and no opportunity to speak with any but a few top government officials, You used that same term yesterday in your testimony uh, when you told the defense counsel that your visit was a conducted tour which you described as pretty unsatisfactory. Can you explain to the court why you called your visit to Democratic Kachia a conducted tour and why as a journalist uh, you felt Unsatisfied. I like to ask questions as a journalist and get answers. And uh, that was really impossible at the time. I, I don't have a, a, a great. Uh, Recollection now of those events of nearly 40 years ago, but in reading uh, from my book, uh, it, it rings a bell, and I can remember the feeling of frustration. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, refer now to a document E3 at slash 1156. Um, this is a surviving report from Democratic Camp uh, about requests that yourself, um, though your name is translated in this document as Lidman, instead of Ledman, um, but is a list of requests from yourself, Professor Caldwell, and Elizabeth Becker, which was written by a cadre named Mee Khan. And the fifth request from you in this list was, and I quote, to meet with leaders such as the first Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister Ng Sri, Deputy Prime Minister Son Sen, Ng Turit, Q Ponnery, Brother Noon Chea, and King Sienu. First, uh, and I realize it was a long time ago, uh, do you have any recollection of meeting a person um, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs named Khan? I do not. Let me read to you uh, a little of what you wrote uh, in relation to your request to interview uh, government officials. Uh, this is in an article titled Governing in Secret. It is in E3 slash 3290, which is a, uh, contains a series of articles by you at English ERN 00419211 and Khmer 01070714. You wrote here about how, despite making repeated requests, 
the only top government officials you were allowed to meet were Pol Pot and Ng Sri. And you also stated the following, quote, I had asked to meet most of the known officials, a total of about ten, including two French-educated sisters who are married to Pol Pot and Ng Sri and held important positions in their own right. I asked in vain to meet the former head of state, Prince Norden Sunu. Continuing below, officials said he had been refusing all requests by visiting delegations who wanted to see him. End of quote. My first question about this, uh, do you remember ever being given a reason uh, for why you could not meet with government officials, leaders such as Noon Chea, Son Sen, uh, and the wives of Ng Sri and Pol Pot, uh, Ng Turet and Q Connery. Were you ever given a reason as to why you could not meet with those people? I don't remember. I may have written that something about what reason was given me at the time, but I haven't seen that in reviewing my writings. Were you ever told while you were in Democratic Camp Chia and in Phnom Penh that Prince Sihanouk was in fact at the Royal Palace under house arrest? Uh, I don't recall being told that. Uh, had you previously met uh, Sihanouk in China? I don't believe so. I'm going to turn now to an article you wrote titled Conformity, a Must for Survival in Cambodia. Uh, this is E338.19. And uh, in this article, uh, you talked about a visit to a cooperative called Lebo Cooperative in Takao Province. Uh, while you were there, you were told that the cooperative included people from Phnom Penh, uh, and you, but you wrote that whenever there were requests to speak with some of them, they always turned out to be away in the rice fields bringing in the harvest. End of quote. You wrote that you were eventually allowed to talk to a man named Net Yan, uh, but you described the circumstances of that interview as follows, quote, Yan's comments could hardly have been spontaneous. He was interviewed in an otherwise empty communal dining hall with a government official from Phnom Penh doing the interpreting and several other officials and cadres listening in, end of quote. A, a question, Mr. Devon, is there anyone in your group that is amongst yourself, Elizabeth Becker and Malcolm, Malcolm Caldwell, who was sufficiently fluent in Khmer to understand what people were saying to you, such as this person, or were you dependent upon the Ministry of Foreign Affairs officials to interpret what was being said to you during these interviews? I don't remember that uh, where I got that impression that I uh, I don't remember who, who it was that uh, uh, told me that. My question, um, did you have your own interpreters with you, or did you have to rely on the officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to translate when you conducted interviews? I don't recall having my own interpreter along with us. 
And uh, I realize it was a long time ago. Uh, when you were in Labo Cooperative in the Takao uh, province, and the district in which Labo uh, is located, uh, Tramcock District. Uh, do you remember whether there were local leaders there who met with you? Uh, I don't recall uh, such a meeting. In uh, your August 1990 and on a 1,000-mile automobile tour, I saw shocking evidence of brutality and regimentation. End of quote. Can you uh, describe to the court uh, in general what it is that you saw during your trip that you considered to be shocking evidence of brutality and regimentation? I don't remember why I said that and why I wrote that. I, I have no recollection of what led me to say that. Let me turn now to another subject that um, you talked about a little yesterday, which was your um, uh, attempt to acquire information relating to the food supplies and health of the people in Cambodia. You wrote an article uh, on the 28th of December 1978 titled, uh, Is Cambodia Starving? This is document E305 slash 12.58. And in this report, uh, you wrote that you saw no evidence of starvation and that rice production appeared to have increased. But you also provided the following qualification to your statement. And I quote your words. This conclusion must be tentative. The government refused access to any production or trade specialists for detailed questioning about claim yields. It likewise ignored repeated requests to take to visiting American reporters to any of the hospitals or small clinics that it says are operating by the score throughout Cambodia, nor would it permit an interview with any public health authority, uh, end of quote. Can you explain why it would have been important to you as a journalist to visit a hospital or to speak to a public health official in order to assess whether people were in fact receiving a sufficient and adequate diet in democratic Kampuchea? I was trying to establish truth. What type of things would you look for? What type of questions might you have asked if you had been allowed to go to a hospital or to meet with a public health official? I have a hard time placing myself back in that situation. I don't know what I would have asked, but I would have thought of some appropriate questions to try to get at the truth of what kind of health care they had. Mr. Dudman, uh, 
the one of the witnesses who has recently testified in this trial uh, is a man named Riel Son, and he was the deputy chief of the Tramcock District Hospital in Takao Province from 1976 to the end of the Khmer Rouge regime. The Tramcock District uh, was the location of the Labo Cooperative, one of the sites you and Ms. Becker were taken to. And on the 17th of March this year in this court, uh, reference, Your Honors, at uh, 11.08 through 11.14 of that morning. This witness testified that in the latter part of the regime, so the time period you were there, the number of people dying from malnutrition got worse because people did not have enough food to eat, and there were about five deaths every day in his hospital from people suffering from malnutrition whose bodies were swollen. The hospital, by the way, where this was taking place uh, was only about 12 miles from the model cooperative you visited, Lebo. My question, um, is this the type of information as a journalist you would have liked to obtain? Uh, if you had been allowed to visit a hospital, uh, to see patients who were sick, uh, to speak to health officials during your trip. Absolutely. That's what I would have liked to have found out. Uh, Mr. President, I object to this question. It is um, very, uh, this question is asking for speculation of the witness. Um, and I think it's not appropriate to ask such a question. If I may respond, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Dudman is a journalist. We're asking about articles uh, written. He's written directly on this very question that he wanted to go and visit hospitals but was denied. I think this is an entirely important uh, and relevant subject to pursue. ກໍລະນີອົງຈໍານອະນຸຍາດໃຫ້ລູກສາປິຍາອາດຕັ້ງຕໍາຫນວດແບບນີ້ບານອະປີປູເລື່ອງນີ້ຄືຊິເລື່
what would you say um, let, let me put it to you another way um, did you have any way of knowing or verifying uh, whether cooperatives and work sites uh, to which you were taken uh, were representative of life of what life was like for most people in democratic Cambodia. I could not be sure that they were representative. I suspected that they were putting their best foot forward. Now, in the the same article uh, that I was uh, just quoting, your article titled, Is Cambodia Starving? E305 slash 12.58. You also wrote the following, quote, Even the most complete figures on rice production, health, and nutrition would say nothing about the human price at which production has been expanded. This price includes the forced emergency evacuation of Phnom Penh and other cities, the strict regimentation of those who survived, and the concentration on agricultural production at the expense of freedom to learn, read, travel, and practice religion. End of quote. Could you uh, explain to the court a little of why you wrote that the expansion of agricultural production had been at the expense of some basic human freedoms. I don't recall what led me to write that. You also wrote in this article about how during your trip, uh, officials from the regime showed off several new dams, including what you described as, quote, three large concrete structures that they said had been built on a crash basis by thousands of workers using only their hands, end of quote. Um, uh, Mr. Dudman, do you remember anything about those dams? And if so, can you provide uh, to the court your re recollection and impression uh, of the dams and what it would have been like to have built those dams by hand? I don't have a direct reaction, uh, uh, recollection after all these years. I wrote what I saw and what I could information I could get, but I don't, I can't go beyond the text of what I wrote. Let me ask you one more um, question on this subject, and I'm referring um, here uh, to a different article uh, titled Cooperative, uh, which is in document E305 slash 12.54 English at S. 00014149 Khmer ERN 01063272. In this article, you described the meals uh, that foreign visitors were provided, and you described them as follows quote, Lunch and dinner almost always included two big flounders or other fish, a big platter of either prawns or lobsters, and either chicken or chunks of beef or pork, plus a big casserole of light Cambodian steamed rice. Salad was sliced cucumbers and boiled eggs. Chinese snowflake beer was the usual beverage. Uh, end of quote. Did you remember uh, receiving meals like this? And can you tell us where, where it was that you uh, were fed meals uh, like the one described? Here?
And, and did you hear my question, Mr. Dudman? Lord Dudman, look. I heard your question. I don't know. That, uh, uh, I don't r really remember where I uh, had those meals. I, I, I'd be surprised if I didn't say in the story something about where it was. And I just want to clarify. Um, do you think, did you observe that ordinary Cambodians in democratic Cambodia were receiving meals like this? I'm sure they were not. We're going to turn now to um, my next subject, and that is the uh, treatment of political opponents or enemies by the Khmer Rouge. Um, in the opening paragraphs of uh, an article you wrote that is dated 26 December 1978, the article titled Conformity, a Must for Survival in Cambodia, this is document E338.19, you wrote, and I quote, the Cambodian version of communism has no place in it for anyone who wants to read, write, or even think independently. And quote. You also stated that the Cambodian revolution had made conformity a condition of survival. Do you remember, uh, can you give uh, any explanation to the court, Mr. Dudman, of what you saw or learned during your trip that led you to write this? I can't remember how I came to write that. Uh, in the same article, E338.19, uh, you also wrote a quote, the Cambodian Revolution, surely the most extreme in modern history, evidently has forced former upper and middle class city dwellers to conform to an austere standard of hard manual labor, no money, no mail system, no telephone service, no books, almost no individual property, no advanced education education, little or no religion, none of the freedoms accepted or at least professed by most of the rest of the world. Social upheaval under the victorious Cambodian revolutionaries has gone well beyond the Chinese precedent at the height of the great proletarian cultural revolution. Uh, why did you say that the Khmer Rouge had gone beyond the Chinese Cultural Revolution? I don't remember how I came to make that comparison. In the same article uh, at English, uh, 338.19 at English ERN 0044438, Khmer 0107-0497. Uh, you described how you had made inquiries to uh, government representatives about reported systematic killings of soldiers and officials of the former regime. And you wrote the following about how Ng Sri responded on that issue. I quote, Ng Sri, the Deputy Prime Minister of Foreign Affairs, did not seem to be denying the charges. He said in an interview that some killings could not be avoided, but that considering the complicated situation after the war, the Communist Party of Kampuchea solved the problem in a good condition 
and avoided many more killings. Continue quoting him. Maybe that is not your belief, he said, but we are responsible and we grasp the concrete situation in our country. We carry out all tasks in order to serve the rights of our people and not just the rights of certain groups. Uh, now, you referenced um, that um, you had been allowed to conduct an interview of being Suri. Uh, can you tell us um, uh, where that interview took place, uh, who was present? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your interview of being Suri? I don't remember that interview. អរគុណលោកនៅថាព្រះនិរង្គអន្តរជាតិអរគុណលោករិឆាត់ដុតមែនឥឡូវនេះដល់ពេលសម្រាក់ហើយឲ្យមានប្រកាសសម្រាក